think that saw is done. As much as I'm going to get it done, there's a couple of things it has I just can't fix. Would require a bunch of new parts, you know. Pull start's broken right there. That little chunk is broken out of it. It's cracked right there. And the screw hole on this side of the case for the cover is stripped out pretty badly, but it's also wobbled to the point where you can't helicoil it. So, I mean, it gets to the point where on a saw like this, you, there's more repair done to the saw than the saw itself is worth. So, I think right now, it oils and runs, so I'm going to bring it back to where it came and call it good enough. I think I should probably start the video like this because I'm actually saying all this and doing this prep after I've come back from visiting Bob this weekend. We went, I went down there and, you know, we, we did some stuff and I'll show some of that on the video. But it became obvious to me very, very quickly that that Bob has hit, hit a limit. He can only do so much and maintain the store that he has. And I'll let him do the discussion. And the video channel for both of us, and this is something that's very, very, very important to understand, both Bob and I uh, see the video channel is hobby, and it's also a way for us to share our experiences in the hobby with other people who have similar interests. Now it's grown quite a bit, and yes, I've gone into some other areas with a with a channel because it was interesting to me at the time, hopefully interesting to you. But the primary reason why this channel exists is for me to share my hobby, the things I really enjoy, Bob as well, and to try to pass on knowledge that we've learned over the years so that other people can, you know, experience and enjoy the same things as much as we do. Now here's the key point that I have to make, and I've made this before, but I have to make it over and over again. The premise of this channel has absolutely no economic roots at all. It is sheer fun and games and sheer hobby. And I am not trying to grow a business and neither is Bob. Bob, his shop is so busy right now, he actually has to start turning things down. I'll let him lay out that, that discussion. Um, I think I had said once before that one of my big goals in life is to pass the world experience and knowledge that I've collected over the last 60 something years to my kids and my grandkids. And that really hasn't changed. I still want to do that. I want them to be able to jump on the channel and see what's going on in the farm, but also at their leisure be able to pick up whatever knowledge that I've picked up over time. That was the, one of the original reasons for the channel. And the other original reason is for Bob and myself to sort of document the times we spend working on chainsaws and to share that with other people who have a similar interest. Those two goals have not changed. So that's the backdrop. I've got a bunch of other things I want to do. I think what I'm going to do in the video is uh, show some of the trials and tribulations that he and I went through to get that 395 going. That 395 is an interesting saw. It's a big boomer of a saw, you know. It's of an older design. It's closer in era to things like the 262 and like the, uh, the 298, some of the older saws that we have. And as a teaser, I am going to get back to 372s. And I cannot take credit for this. This is something that one of my subs did, posted up a video, and I've seen elsewhere. But one of the approaches to increasing compression on the 372s is kind of like we had done with the big bores using a steel 52 millimeter piston. Well, take that same concept and pick up a piston for a 268 is 50 millimeters like a 372 top end is, but the distance from the pin to the crown is different. Let me see if I can't show that. This is a stock. 
piston from one of the 372s. This was the two ring iteration. Here is the 371 single ring iteration and these are the ones I've used when I try to build the old ones because the single ring has a little bit less drag but also the single ring pistons a little bit lighter. So what's this right here? A Meteor brand piston for a 268 which is a completely different saw. So why is that of interest? But if you put the wrist pin in there, you're going to see that the crown of the piston is just ever so slightly taller. And that the skirt relative to the wrist pin is ever so slightly shorter. So if you take this piston and possibly do just a little bit of a pop-up where you take away a little bit of the material from the crown, you're going to get both an increase in compression but also increased duration on the intake timing. Can you put that piston right in a stock 372 top end with a base gasket that has 40,000 squish? Probably not. Let's take a measurement and see. Most saws stock come with somewhere in the order of 40,000 squish and the distance between the top of the crown on the 268 Meteor piston and the top of the crown on the OEM 371-372 piston is 60. So that gives you at least, at least a 20,000 interference where this is going to smack right to the top of the cylinder if you put it right on a stock saw. Now, if I trim around the crown of that piston like I do with a pop-up on the lathe and I take away say 40 thousandths now I basically have that piston projecting into the combustion chamber and you have a pop-up without having to trim the base so the beauty of this concept is it's a lot more likely that a person can successfully take away material from the crown of that piston and making a pop-up than it is for them to take away material from the base of the cylinder without messing up the cylinder. So from that perspective alone, this is an interesting concept. Thank you. I can't tell you what your screen name is because it's Ukrainian or Russian or something like that where a guy did it and posted up a video. And I think that's a very legitimate approach to, to increasing the compression on a stock 372 cylinder. So I'm here with Bob at Ashoka Turf and Timber, and I walked in the door. Hey, Bob. Good afternoon. Take a look at that bench. See anything different about that bench? And he was saying that this stuff right here, this was just one half. A third. A third of the snowblowers that came in. Just on that one storm last week. Just a one storm. Yeah, we got clobbered. And there's a reason why we're showing you this. I'm going to show you some other stuff. You don't mind me wandering the store with the camera, do you? No, I'll do the tour. Do the tour. The store that we got a week ago, it was early. It was November 15th, so it caught everybody off guard. Nobody was ready. Nobody, not that they do it anyway, but very few people pre-started the blowers. So, you know, rocks, heavy snow. Most of this is carburetor issue. And then you got, got one part up pretty good. You can actually bring that back if you get a shot of this. Uh, that was a mouse nest. And that lower there. Oh my god. And kind of that one got kind of burned up. Well, people don't check things. And then the saws. Now that's actually going down. If you look at the other stuff, the shelf, actually a bunch of stuff got picked up. But we're uh, we're quite busy. Of course, there's a reason why we're going to delve into this topic a little bit more here. 
without uh, being real busy. You're on camera. All right. Now the bench is, this is what a real bench looks like. It ain't an operating table where everything's neat. You know, you've got to turn out a lot of work. Um, today's just a hangout day. We're hanging out in the shop. We're not really looking to accomplish too much stuff. Just that the weather's bad. Everything's snowed in. It's been too long since we did a mini. So we got to play around a little bit. But this is just some of the crap that you see in a, in a general uh, shop environment. Um, it's not all about modeling and rebuilding and uh, hot rod and saws. Sometimes it's just getting stuff that's beat up back together. So one little trick I want to show you. Actually, you got to come around here. This is kind of mostly done already, but you know, a lot of times these bolts get stripped because they get loose. And you know, I know you can see it can happen. The top cover screws, a lot of other things. But these are the ones that everybody doesn't bother to tighten up because you got to take the bar and the chain off to do it. So when they're all really egged out, what I've been doing is you get a tap and you tap it the next size up. You go from a five to a six. Like I said, I already kind of reamed these out. But you just run it all the way in. You back it out a couple of times. This is once, like I said, this is like when the original hardware is all egged out. Thank you, sir. The original hardware is all egged out and uh, you can't get it in there. So what I discovered was, these are the bolts, uh, these are actually muffler bolts for like a 450 or 445. And uh, that is the right length. So what you do is, you just take your, uh, your inside bar split, but I don't even know where it is. And you just open that up a little bit so you get the bolts through. And then you use these muffler bolts. And now, now you're all set. You've got the repair. You know, it's not some guy running Tapcon screws, <laughs> which I've seen guys do. <laughs> I've seen them in cylinders. Yeah, so that's just a quick fix when you lose the, the holes for the inside dog. These are all uh, 372 side covers with the exception of a red one. All these side covers came in and being used in this condition. But this is how much was left on this. This, was, this is Todd's. That was Todd's 2165. But yeah, I got this busted stuff. This was the best. Somebody actually, that's, that's what was holding the bar in a saw. Work? So you say, like, why do you stock, you know, with these side covers? Well, this is why. Because guys run them until they get like this. So I just saved a couple of them. Actually, one thing I want to try to do is some of the aftermarket side covers, the guts aren't as smooth. So what I'm going to try to do is just take the guts out of one of these and stick it in the aftermarket. That's almost as good as this your your mouse trap. The old flathead that comes just didn't have that much room in them. Uh, like you see the, the one just to the rear. But uh, these some of these new Briggs, there's like a whole big space in there for mice to build condominiums. <laughs> Rat traps. You guys have seen this before. This is just a general shop day, some loose ends. We're gonna buff up a, a 262 XP cylinder here. Laying around. So just There really wasn't any aluminum transfer in here, so... Let's do a little more. Let's go back the other way. Oh, I think the last time we were here, Bob, you we were doing the same thing. I wonder if this is a trend. <laughs> well, on some of these, like, you know, you can't get these anymore. The question I have for you is, where do you find those ball hones? I got these from Bailey's. Well, one of my missions for coming down here was to come up with some stuff. To make a, a red version of my 372 XPW. And I understand that they never made them in the factory, but Bob had a set of cases. Like I said, coming down here, you can find stuff like that, you know? I've got a project here I want to see if I can move further along. It's a 395. So 
a couple unrelated projects. A lot of times we have a, a theme. Today's theme is just hanging out. That's exactly right. It's been a long time since we did a minute together. Yep. And weather and health shit and all kinds of other things. So I just hang out in the shop and just do a little tinkering. Get caught up on a few things. And of course, one of the themes here, the one theme is I think is what we've been saying is uh, back to the hobby. And we have to uh, we have to elaborate a little bit on that. And I think you did it in the video from the other day on Thanksgiving, which is that we have fun sharing this stuff with each other and then you know the channel and some of the friends that we that we've made there. It's fun to share it as a hobby. Yeah. Um, the problem with me is that the hobby, you got the hobby and then you got work. And because I got the story here, you know, I'm already doing kind of a balance and act trying to keep that separate. But what was happening was, uh, and this is why I got to apologize to guys who, you know, say I'm not shipping parts or I don't respond to every email. But there was just, you know, between the subscribers and the guys on the sites, there's so much incoming requests for, for things that I just don't have the time to do. You just look around here, you know, the truth is, this is a brick and mortar operation. It's really not an online operation. So trying to, uh, you know, incorporate all those other kind of requests and the business and shipping parts, and, you know, just, there's just no time to do that. You're getting all wrapped up in the project. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Well, this is the latch. You gotta knock this out because the top of the latch is still in there. This is the latch. That's right. Yeah. So you gotta drive that pin out, then get this bigger pin out, and then the trigger goes up this way. I guess there's a spring still in there. Spring's gone. Really spring. Of course, we have it in stock here at Turf and Timber. This came out pretty good. Yeah, that came out good. No, I can't throw it. Yeah. No, that's the thing. Anything. That... I don't you think can I see about trying to light really, I guess, but you can see a little. Yeah, there you go. Just that quick little home. Clean that up nice. As you know, you can't get you can't get 262 cylinders anymore. through the casing. I can put some gas in it and see if we can see what's going on there. Actually, you know what I want to do? Can I, can I get a, a fuel line from you? Yeah. Let me just do that. There's some hanging over there. You can get around here. You can't get through here. <laughs> Holy crap. A busy shop. Busy shop. That's, that snowstorm just blew everybody up. Not too many saws are easier to work on than these. Sadly, more and more parts are going the NLA route. Yeah. So what do you want to do this year? We got to kind of kick around where we're going to go with the channel too. You know? Well, one of the things that we've been wanting to do is come up with as many goofy configurations as 372s as you can. Cleaning things. Then we keep going back and forth like a freaking yo yo. That's right. We're kind of tight quarters here because the place is just mobbed. You should have dumped it in a tray first to see how bad it was. Could have. You probably just look at the fuel filter and you get an idea. Now there's a kind of tip that you can uh, pass along to people, you know? One of the first things we do. This when saws come in, is to dump the, to dump the fuel. Okay, what's he trying to run it on? I'm going to take a peek at the cylinder, see what it feels like. 
you know, was, you learn lessons by doing stupid shit, doing a complete service on a saw, only to find out that it's, it's like, because the customer, you know, what the customer said, you know, it doesn't lead you in the right direction. This looks a little small. Yeah. Here, I gotta put the camera on this. Gee, my saw won't run good. And what did Bob say? What was the first thing you do? This is what came rolling out of the fuel tank. That's garbage. You know, one of the things that's kind of comical, and people do struggle, and I mean struggle, to maintain uh, fresh fuel supplies. Yeah. And it's so common. Well, I just put fresh gas in there. And, you know, I say, yeah, but what was already in there? Well, I don't know. I said, yeah, but you, you know, you could have poured fresh gas in on, you know, like salad dressing. Yeah, that was like salad dressing. Yeah. There's two things about doing projects here. Number one is everything's here. But the other thing is there's not a lot of situations they're gonna you either have a see before. you got going over there is a camera worthy? Well, there was one I said before. I just stuck the uh, the guts of one of these busted side covers into the aftermarket uh, casting. And yes, much smoother. Does it work? Yeah. That, ra that ratchety the lack of smoothness is gone. So that's worth doing. I'm not saying all the aftermarket covers have that issue, but that one wasn't smooth. Now so it now is. it is. So I mean, this summer I went through my epiphany when they got my hip done. There's only so much I'm going to be able to do. So, but we have we have to we have to talk to you guys a little bit and sort of set some boundaries to what we actually can uh, accomplish and some of the things we can't accomplish. And I did set a boundary up where I can't handle phone calls. I just, I think what it is, is what you got to realize is everybody looks at their world from their one perspective. And what's happened with us is now you've got 6,000 of them, of which maybe 10% want to call and have a conversation, which I'm very, very flattered and very, very grateful for. I can't handle 600 phone calls, <laughs> you know? So, uh, what I've done is I've tried to keep it to where I do my messaging both on the YouTube channel but also on things like OPE forum and forestry forum is where I do some of the communications. And um, again, i got to be grateful for, for the people who are engaged in the channel and keep going. And I appreciate your patience and understanding there's only so much we can do and still live life. It would be a full-time job if we tried to... Uh, at this point, it would be a full-time job if we just managed the interaction. Well, yeah, the my, my sentiments are similar. And the fact is, what you see here, this is a full-time job. Yeah. And the fact is, I'm already kind of walking the tightrope as it is because as a saw hobbyist and enthusiast and sharing a hobby, you know, but, but I'm also a dealer. You know, so the thing is, I don't want that to kind of melt into each other. And that's what's kind of been happening. Yeah. And the whole thing, when we started this goofy thing, with the channel, I didn't even want to do it at first. Because every time I was pointing at the camera, I don't point that at me. But mm -hmm. the funny thing is, you know, we've made a lot of good friends and uh, some good people there, but I, th I don't think what everybody understands is the between the channel and uh, the saw sites, like OPE and Forestry and Arbor site, it just multiplies. It's just it's too much. And 
that's why I, you know, I got to apologize to guys that I've uh, you know shipped parts to in the past, but you know that just can't do that anymore because I don't have a couple hours a day to spare to process parts orders. Now, granted, I'm not set up for it. In any kind of real place that sells parts, you got a, a website with a shopping cart or a basket to drop stuff in. It's all automated, and you know, with me, it's like. Uh, you got to you know, call me on the phone or write down the credit card number and you key it in and then you walk the packages over to the post office and you wait in line and um, so I just you know I don't want anybody to be offended but between that and the, the emails and stuff there's just too much of it and this place is as you can see just one snowstorm I mean this place is rocking well I, and it's a brick this is a brick and mortar operation it's not a it's not an online business and you can't do both so and I feel bad too because some of the parts I got I know that nobody else has, because they're, but you know what, it's, it sounds real simple sometimes, you say, well, just, you know, get a couple parts and stick them in a box and throw them in the mail. Times that's 100. Okay, that's okay if there was like one box. Yeah. But then, you know, there's days where I come in and you could literally spend an hour just responding, you know, to the emails. Well, you know, there's, there's people coming in. So that's why that's got to get, that's kind of get shut down. If I don't respond to every uh, question, you know, especially if it's about a steal or sometimes it requires a really long response that I ain't got time to write. And I don't want anybody to be offended, but there's just, there's just too much of it. And the truth is, some of the guys that call, I'll be honest with you, I'd rather talk to you guys than half the people that walk in the door anyway. But the fact is, there's, 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 you just can't do that. you got to take care of the local stuff first. Yeah, and that, I think the key point here is that, uh, Bob, this is in the outside looking in. You can correct me if I'm wrong. You've got more than a full-time job just dealing with this counter. So anything that happens online means you have to stop, step away from the counter, which is already full, and then do something else. So it's, it's, we're talking about just the physics of time. It's not desire or anything else. Like so, so the thing is, I want to keep, obviously we got the store here, and this is my full-time job. And the hobby, and that's kind of what today's theme was, was kind of like get back to the hobby. You know, the hobby, too. yeah, the hobby is the hobby, and I don't want the hobby to become work. Because they got plenty of work. So right. there's the work, and then there's the hobby, and I got to keep them separate. I'm not going to have any fun. So anyway, so just don't want anybody to be offended if we're not, you know, you know, responding. And, you know, but like shipping parts, that's done. I'll still ship some saws, you know, because it's just simple. You put a label on a box. But um, you know, the rest of that, that's it's got to it's got to stop. So it has. That's why I've dropped the uh, you know the sponsorship on a, a couple sites. Just, you know, it's not looking good. You, know, so you say, well, if you got that much, you can hire somebody. It's not that simple to do. No. Um, and we don't really need more work. No, neither that's, one. That's, that's the other we got. We got a full plate just with what's going on. You know, the steel dealer down the road that closed back in the summer, you know, people are like, what's that do to you? The truth is we haven't let it do anything to us. And you know, we're not taking in any extras. We don't want to have mess around with stills. We got a few loops of chain that we sell. But uh, yeah, we're kind of at cruising altitude right now. We don't really need to do more. That's it. Well, I appreciate that. And I want to get this out so we set expectation levels properly. You've got tree companies come in, they'll bring in, you know, a half dozen saws at a time. And that's why, you know, some guys have asked, and I get it that, you know, maybe your local dealer does what he's doing or something, but, you know, I can't pick up the slack every time a local guy can't figure out auto tune. You know, the idea of, you know, more saws getting shipped in from all over the country. It's just, it's, it's bizarre. It's, so it's amazing how the, the whole online internet thing multiplies things beyond beyond your wildest you know, imagination. Yeah, you, you just can't do it. So, my policy, and I'm sure yours is going to be similar. My policy on work has always been one of two places I get my work from: a couple of the local dealers who I do work for. Or, and the other places, if it walks in the door and can go back out that door with the same set of feet, I can take it on. Um, but if I have to go pick it up, and I don't care whether it's the mail at the post office or um, anywhere else but the two dealers, I can't do it. I really, I don't have the bandwidth because I have the farm, the family, and some other things going on in my world. And Bob is, is uh, that times 10. So, you know, you're pretty much a similar deal where unless it walks in through that door over there, you can't take it on. Yeah, and it's got to walk in with a customer, not the UPS driver. Yep. And any any be... unsolicited saw that shows up is considered a gift. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all said. So, does that cover what you want to cover? Yeah, pretty much. I just, because I know, like, I've been, you know, because, you know, I get emails on, I get private messages on three different sites. 
Plus, guys are sending emails to the store email address, and um, it's just I just don't have the time. I don't have the time to do it. Yeah. You know, and I just don't want guys to be offended. Because I know you know there's so many different conduits to communicate now and then you know, nowadays, and I don't want people to say, yeah, that, that jerk never even got back to me. Um, but you know, you, it just you see how many times, you know, how many messages there are. Then you got the phone ring, and people are coming in. You know, it's, it's a busy store. And I can't be doing that. I'm certainly not going to like sit home and catch up on that stuff. Because now that's work. Yeah, that's so it. most of you guys, and I won't use names, you know, but like most of you guys I consider friends. And I want you to be like, you know, friends and not customers. But then there's people, you know, that don't get it. And, you know, they'll send messages on you know, one of the sites and then they get impatient. Like, I'm, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'll get it like two days later if I haven't responded. There'll be a message and it'll say, uh, bump, anybody home? And I was like, that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> you know, I don't need that. That's, yeah. that's all. So bottom line here is if you want uh, stuff from, from Ashokan Turf and Timber, you got to come here to Ashokan Turf and Timber. you got to get it and you have to walk it out the door.